Hello, my name is Sophia Fox and I'm an optical engineer at EDR Medezzo, who are channel partner for ANSYS in the Nordics and UK. So this is one of a series of short videos to give an overview of Lumerical's many different tools. So here are the three optical software solutions provided by ANSYS and Lumerical is the wave optics solution that specialises in photonic simulation, but it can model any features whose dimensions are comparable to the wavelength of the light. There are also two ray tracers, so there's ZMAX, which is used for optical design level, so for the design of imaging and illumination systems, which include lenses, prisms, mirrors, and so on, and then SPIOS, which is for what's called system design level. So here you can model your optical design under different lighting conditions and environments, and it has extremely accurate rendering with its human vision tools. There is what's called interoperability between numerical ZMAX and SPIOS, and what this means is you can easily import and export data between these for a more seamless workflow, and model both the nanoscopic and macroscopic parts of your design. When you install numerical, you can create or load projects by starting the ANSYS Optics Launcher from your start menu, and so here you can see that numerical is a bunch of simulation tools aimed to help you simulate your designs efficiently and quickly. You'll also find an application gallery where there is a large library of examples, which have been validated and which you can filter by application or industry. So if I select this one, open this example of a microlens and grating coupler, hit read more, and this takes me straight to the documentation of the example on knowledge base. And within uh, ANSYS account, you can download these and so avoid reinventing the wheel and get started with your simulation. There are also forums, technical support and training material with the ANSYS Learning Hub to familiarize with the software as quickly as possible, and you can also access all of these from the Lumerical GUI directly. If you find you have a specific application that you feel is very niche, please contact us at EDR Modezo or ANSYS because there is something that can help you. And finally, if there is an application or example you would like a webinar on, please leave a comment below or contact me. Okay, so back to the tools in Lumerical, specifically FTTD solutions. So this includes the FTTD stack and RCWA tools. So FTTD stands for the finite difference time domain method, and I'm going to demonstrate what that means here. So this is the main GUI window. I've got a photonic crystal cavity structure, monitors to measure the fields and an excitation source. And if I run the simulation, uh, it increments the fields at each time step. And that's a big advantage to this method because if you have your fields as a function of time, you can then Fourier transform your fields to get them as a function of a large frequency range in a single simulation. And the Fourier transform is taken care of by these monitors. So that is what's meant by broadband. Uh, Lumerical also has this uh, BFAST or broadband fixed angle source technique. So this is a feature that addresses uh, the issues when you're implementing periodic boundary conditions with angled plane wave sources. Um, so I'm going to go back to this example. So in addition to these uh, monitors, uh, there are many more advanced analysis tools called analysis groups that you can find in the object library. And here you can compute uh, the relevant uh, quantities and you can customize these analysis calculations by amending the scripts, adding parameter inputs, or you can create your very own easily from scratch. Similarly, in FTTD, you can set up very complicated geometry. So in addition to these uh, primitives, you can use one of the many structure groups uh, available in Numerical and uh, you can uh, parameterize your geometry and write scripts. So here, um, the photonic crystal cavity is an existing structure group in Numerical, and if I open it, I can modify its properties in the script tab. And so here, the uh, syntax is very similar to MATLAB. With scripting, you can also set up the uh, entire simulation, run and post-process the results, allowing for a very automated workflow. And if you're really into scripting, there is additionally a MATLAB and a Python API. With the Python API, you can also do photonic inverse design using the uh, LoomOpt Python package. So here is the workflow uh, for optimizing a grating coupler for a photonic integrated circuit application, which you can find on knowledge base. And this includes the use of a Python script using LoomOpt, which uses the uh, adjoint method for optimization. And there again is lots of technical support on how to use this. So you'll see in this workflow, uh, in step three, you can export uh, designs to GDS2 files. And in fact, you can import and calibrate GDS2, CAD files, and metrology data like stem images. So here's an example of a stem image of the photonic crystal cavity. And here it is um, imported and calibrated to be simulated in numerical. And there are a list of other uh, import objects here. I mentioned interoperability with ZMAX. Uh, so you can import and export the field data as a ZBF file for pop analysis in Optic Studio and export simulation results as ray set data for ray trace simulations using far field projection tools. And here is an example of an OLED where 
patterning is used to increase the light extraction and the resulting beam profiles of the OLEDs are exported to ZMAX for further analysis. One can also optimize their design, taking results from multiple physics solvers, by creating a meta model using OptiSlang, which uses the latest AI techniques to optimize your design. So in this example workflow uh, for a max Ender modulator, we use OptiSlang to minimize the velocity mismatch and loss, which are merit functions. Uh, and they are a function of the selected inputs, applied doping, uh, which is calculated with the charge solver, which is part of numerical multiphysics, and the electrode geometry, which is calculated using HFSS or high frequency. A big advantage of numerical is its stability which you can exploit to run a coarser mesh and therefore run a faster simulation. And this is very powerful because typically the FTTD method gets so computationally expensive with marginal increases in resolution. Numerical supports non-uniform resolution and you can also customize the boundary conditions depending on your simulation and to exploit symmetry. And with this stability, one can model a wide range of materials, including metals, anisotropic materials and non-linear materials. So here are some examples that simulate non-linear effects, and they include second harmonic generation, gain material in lasers, and the higher order Kerr effect observed in graphene. There is a large material library where you can incorporate materials immediately, or you can input your own uh, measured refractive index uh, from, say, ellipsometry measurements or from literature. Additionally, it's possible to use 3.5 semiconductor material data tool, which can estimate optical properties based on composition values. For example, changing the aluminium composition for an electron blocking layer of an LED. And then finally, I'll just add that for intensive simulations, you can run multiple simulations or divide a large simulation up among processes or cores with an HPC or cloud computing, which we can provide. And there is also a GPU version of Lumerical. So Lumerical has other tools, and they are often much faster, efficient ways to simulate rather than FDTD, depending on what you need and your structure. With FDTD solutions is the Stack Solver, which includes additional script functions and a simple GUI that implements the transfer matrix method to analyze thin film multilayer stacks for both plane wave and dipole emission for, say, per cell factor calculations. Also included is the RCWA, or Rigorous Coupled Wave Analysis Solver, which is often used to calculate the diffraction order efficiencies of periodic structures like diffraction gratings, moth eye structures, and metasurfaces. And there is a powerful feature called the Lumerical Subwavelength Model, or LSWM, which automates the interoperability with ZMAX and SPIOS, where you can export the results of your gratings as essentially a coating in these ray traces. And in ZMAX, you can call Lumerical dynamically during optimization and optimize your grating design for the entire optical level system. So here is an AR application where the diffraction efficiencies of grating have been calculated in Lumerical and are exported to SPIOS for system level simulation, where we can simulate what the human eye would see uh, through these AR glasses. So thanks for listening, and if you want to know more, please contact us at EDR Modesso or ANSYS.